Hey Mustangs! Today, we will be introducing the Alumnus Spotlight Series to the range, where we focus on graduates doing big things. We will be shining the spotlight on Nikki Sines, who graduated from Mountain Range in 2017. She's a software developer for a company called Acclimate, which assists companies wishing to go carbon neutral. She presented the Mr. Hawk's Computer Science and AP Computer Science Principles classes into Ms. Schaefer's Marketing class. This is her presentation in its entirety. We hope you enjoy. That's just so everybody can hear me. Um, but yeah, uh, like Mr. Hawk said, I'm working for a startup now called Acclimate, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, I initially came down to talk to Mr. Hawk's computer science classes, but um, a lot of what I'm doing really overlaps with business, so we invited the marketing classes down, and um, I also was like a stud at DECA back in my day, so um, I can answer questions about that too. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we'll start here. Like Mr. Hawk said, I graduated in 2017 from Mountain Range, and um, which isn't that long ago, but I do feel old watching. Like I'm not always with that. Um, and you know, when I was in high school, I was really into volleyball. I loved DECA. I went to um, ICPC twice, and I also really liked student government. Um, and I just I loved being a student. Like I really loved all of my classes. And I could never pick like a favorite. I loved AP Lit just as much as I loved AP Physics. And um, yeah, I just really enjoyed being an all-around student. With that being said though, I basically didn't even acknowledge the fact that computer science existed in high school. Um, I think we had AP computer science or something in high school, but honestly, like I, I just didn't care to look into it. It always seemed like something that other people did wasn't something for me. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but like I'm pretty sure it wasn't computer science. Uh, so fast forward to college. I went to the University of Denver, and if anybody's interested in DU, come talk to me. It's my heart and soul. I will convince you to go there. Um, and when I went, when I started my freshman year, I was just like so pathetically undeclared. Like some students go into college, like they're undeclared, but they kind of have an idea of what they want to go into, or they just forgot to write something down on their application or something. But I was, told, I had no idea what I, what I wanted to do. Like I said, I was interested in everything. I loved all the subjects that I took in high school, and so I was just lost. Um, so, like anybody, I just took a bunch of random classes. I took like an anthropology class, and then I was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll take a physics class. Oh, do I want to go into the business school? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, a lot of back and forth. But eventually, I found socio-legal studies, which is a pre-law sort of deal that DU has, and that was really awesome. I was taking classes on criminology, you know, criminal justice, legal theories and procedures and all that. Um, but then I found out that that is what they call a secondary major at DU. So you can't just major in that and graduate. You have to add something onto it. Um, law is super broad, so they want you to have like depth in a certain subject in order to graduate, which makes sense. But I was back at square one. Like I had this awesome major that I loved, but I couldn't graduate with it, so I had to find something else to do. Um, and I was lost again. So what I did is I actually went to the career services department at DU, and I took like a career aptitude test, which you kind of have to be careful with. I feel like sometimes these tests can kind of be like BS, like they give you five different careers and then just like lump you into one of them. But this test was pretty cool. They asked me things that I liked to do, things I was interested in, what I wasn't interested in, and they basically gave me skills and then that I probably had, you know, as a result of my answers, and then careers that correlated with that. So it turns out I'm pretty good at working with computers, or at least this test thought I would be. And at that point, that was pretty much all the direction I needed, so I was like, okay, I'll take a computer science class, you convince me. Um, so I started my sophomore year of college by taking a computer science like intro one class, and then um, a law class that was all about privacy law, internet law, like the intersection of law and technology. And that was pretty much it for me. Like those two classes together, I was sold. Um, I loved the fact that it was already incorporating something that I had come to love and found really interesting, as well as this new kind of frontier and new way of thinking, this really logical way of solving problems. Um, so that was that was pretty much it. And for all the computer science students in the room, I, you know, it was a super comprehensive education. I learned Java, C and C++, C Sharp, that I took a like video game programming class, which was cool. Um, and then like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I learned all about NoSQL and SQL databases, so I can answer all those questions um, at the end. 
But um, what was also really cool is I just learned like the depth of computer science as well as the breadth. So computer science as a discipline, like you can dive so far into those rabbit holes. And this is a quote I pulled from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, and it's basically just saying that jobs in computer science and IT are projected to grow 13% in the next decade, which is higher than the average for all occupations. And there's just a special demand for jobs in cloud computing, collection and storage of big data, and information security. But I mean, the list really goes way beyond that. There's front and back end web development, there's machine learning and artificial intelligence, like DevOps, quality assurance. Uh, the list literally is endless because things are being invented every single day that didn't exist the day before. So it's really crazy just to see just how vast the world of computer science can be. But also what I found really interesting was um, how far computer science spread across a lot of different disciplines um, and how far its reach is across a lot of different disciplines. So these are a couple examples I pulled out. This one is a tweet from a professor that I read a book of his on privacy law, and he's a law professor and a computer science pres professor at Northeastern University. So obviously, follow him on Twitter. Um, and this is an article saying that Facebook is researching AI systems that see, hear, and remember everything you do, like as if they don't already. But he quoted it and said, they're not going to stop unless we make them. And I thought this was a cool example because his entire profession exists um, because of this intersection between technology and law, democracy, society, um, and just how intertwined they're becoming and the protections that need to be in place. And then this other example here is a blog post from some of my colleagues at a company called Finch. They're also a climate tech company um, like Acclimate, and they're basically just talking about internet waste and how everything that we have and delete and watch and scroll through on the internet gets stored as data and has an actual carbon footprint attached to it, gets stored into actual physical data facilities that takes a toll on our environment. And uh, I mean, just beyond law and environmental science, like the intersection between computer science goes on forever. There's business, there's journalism, art, biology. I mean, just think about it, like our phones, the computers that we use for school and whatever, like it becomes where we don't even think about it, but it's so involved in our day to day life. So that kind of leads me to what I'm doing now. So I mentioned that I work for Acclimate. Um, I'm a software developer for them, and Acclimate is a software service, website, application, and we help small, medium-sized businesses go carbon neutral. And uh, I can give a little demo here in a little bit, but the idea is that we calculate people's carbon footprint on our platform based on their offices, the vehicles they use, their employees commuting, um, even things like you know business travel, flights, lifts, Uber rides, all that fun stuff. And then they can buy carbon offsets on our site. And carbon offsets are basically uh, like these environmental projects they remove a certain amount of carbon from the air, and to offset your own carbon footprint, you can support these projects and um, kind of cancel out your carbon by investing in these projects. So it's super cool. Um, I signed on with them as when I graduated college, and I started as an intern with two other interns, and then those one went back to finish his senior year in college, and one went to grad school, so, and I signed on full time. So it's just me now. Um, and it's been great, although it started as like, and still is a very junior level position, like it was an internship. I was doing very senior level things, like I was, you know, I'm taking entire projects and features from concepts and like wire wireframes on Figma to actually building it and pushing it to production for people to use, which isn't necessarily something you get to do just right out of college um, in software development, which is really cool. Um, another really cool thing about working for Acclimate is that it's, centered around sustainability, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. Although I'm older than you guys, I'm still Gen Z, and in the sustainability space, they call us the climate generation, because our generation is gonna be the ones that have to make the hardest decisions about how to proceed with climate change, how to prevent it, and uh, ultimately, we're gonna be the ones that are facing a lot of the consequences if we don't. Um, so it's really cool to be able to code all day and work for a company that has a really cool purpose and mission, um, versus just like some random corporation. But you know, working even in a small team like Acclimate, so we started with six when we had the two other interns and now we're down to four, but um, it definitely shows like the inequality in the tech world. Um, I'm the only woman on the team and have been even when the other two interns were, were 
you know, I was like the first woman and the only woman currently. Um, and also we're a completely white team. So it's, it definitely showcases like the inequalities. It's a very white field, it's a very male field. Um, and the problem with that is that we're building things that people use every day. We meaning Acclimate, we meaning everybody in this room, whether you're in business or you're in technology. Um, and if we're only building it from a white perspective and a male perspective, then inherently it's going to be built for a white and male persona. Um, and for grand challenges like climate change and even things like you know building fun apps or building social media or whatever, these are problems that we need a lot of perspectives on and a lot of solutions to. And that doesn't come from a one-check mind from one demographic. Um, and so we need more minds in computer science. We need diverse minds in computer science to be able to solve big problems, to be able to create really groundbreaking innovative technology. Um, and it's just not the case right now. It's a very unequal field and it showcases even in super small companies like Acme. All right, so what we're doing now. So in August, uh, we got accepted into Techstars. Techstars is a startup accelerator uh, that's very selective. Thousands of companies apply every year from all around the world and only 10 get accepted. And we were one of the 10, which is really cool. And so all of us, I mean, we're located in Denver, so we're pretty local, but all these companies from all over the world come to Boulder, Colorado, and we attend the Startup Accelerator, which basically is like boot camp, and it just tells you how to grow your business, how to be able to raise money from investors, how to build something that people are gonna love and use and share with other people to grow your business. Um, it's been crazy. And it's really cool because we're in contact with these people from literally all walks of life. It's five different continents that people are coming from, and they all have different experiences with and perspectives on sustainability. Oh, that's the other thing. All these companies are centered around sustainability, which is super cool. But, I mean, immediately, by hearing all these different perspectives and takes on sustainability, it forced us to rethink everything and really go back to the basics. So one day, we were coding all day, and then the next, we were like doing data collection, doing user interviews, sending out marketing emails. I was on sales calls. We were talking about our terms of service and like long-term discussions about how we want to collect data and what's ethical and how we should collect data and all that. Um, immediately, it was like moving past skills just related to coding and again, reaching into so many different fields, including a lot of business. So um, again, any of the marketing students who have questions, please ask me. Um, but yeah, it just shows that you know computer science is one thing, but when you get to it and when you're put into real positions and you know the real world, there's a lot else that goes into it. So I'll kind of leave you guys with this. Um, the first is make computer science work for you. If computer science is like your main passion, and this is something you want to dive so deep into and dive down this rabbit hole, please do and become some wicked computer guru and can't wait to see what you build. But if it's not your passion or you don't know what your passion is yet, that's fine too. Make computer science work for you get involved with it in whatever capacity that might mean, um, it's not going anywhere. And it's becoming increasingly involved in all aspects of our life. And so having even just a little bit of knowledge on computer science is gonna really give you an edge and just give you knowledge to go out and do good things in whatever field you might end up in. And then the other thing I'll leave you with is embrace your individuality. It's, like I said, a very white field, a very male field. Don't be intimidated by it. Like I said, we're solving huge problems. We are, you know, like climate change. It's like the biggest thing any of us are gonna face in our lifetimes. And it's not coming, the solution isn't coming from one perspective. So embrace it. Embrace the different perspectives and all the different things you bring to the table. Um, and that also has to go with being young. Like, don't be intimidated by all these old people in business or in computer science. Like, these fields are changing so fast that, like already, you guys have more knowledge on computer science than I did at your age and um, embrace that. It's something that gives you an edge. Okay, so now I'm just gonna open it up and we can ask questions. It doesn't have to be related to computer science. It can be about college in general, how, you know, how all that works, about my homework, about. That wraps up this alumnus spotlight. We hope you enjoyed 